From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Connie, Mr. Dollar. Well, you're about the last person in the world I thought I'd be hearing from. What do you mean? I waited for you last night at the Trade Winds Bar, but you didn't show up. No, I got delayed on the way by a hit over the head in a warehouse in a pier. What? No, don't tell me that surprises you. Of course it does. Look, that whole routine of yours yesterday about telling me where Tom Chase is hiding was just a decoy so he could get me down there and try to finish me off. If that night watchman hadn't come along when he did, I'd still... I don't know what you're talking about. Want to prove that? Yes, but how? By opening up and telling me what this is all about. Where are you now? Downstairs in the lobby. I'll be right down. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Barbados, British West Indies, to the Home Office Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Phantom Chase Matter. Expense account continued. <laughs> Item 21, two cents. Exactly what I'd have taken at that point to chuck the whole deal. Getting slugged on the head the night before was bad enough. But when I got down to the lobby that morning and found that Connie was nowhere in sight... I realized I was right back where I started from, which was nowhere. I went over to the desk. Yes, sir? Hey, look, a girl just phoned me from the lobby. Did you see her? Yes, sir. The most attractive young lady. Yeah, and, and right now a most invisible young lady. Where'd she go? Why, I don't know, sir. Was she alone? Oh, she's quite alone. She came in and asked to be put through to your room. And after she'd hung up, she suddenly turned and walked out. Oh, well, that's just great. You wouldn't happen to know her. <laughs> I'm afraid that's a pleasure that's been denied me, sir. Ever seen her before? Yes, once or twice around town. Was she with someone when you saw her? Oh, sir, a woman with such uh, obvious charm is seldom alone. Yeah, well, uh, you remember what the man she was with looked like? Well, only in a vague sort of way, I'm afraid. He was uh, large, rather handsome, athletic looking, I'd say. Could be Chase, all right. Chase? Uh, skip it. Well, uh, that's that, I guess. Sorry you didn't make connections, sir. But perhaps you'll come back. I'm not counting on it. <laughs> A long time ago, I learned that in my job, it's always a good idea to keep in contact with the local authorities. So I decided to visit the colonial police. As of the moment, I needed a shoulder to do a little crying on. The shoulder in this case turned out to belong to an Inspector Whitsett. Uh, let me see if I have this thing straight, Mr. Dollar. <clears throat> this chap you're looking for, Tom Chase, embezzled some money from the New York investment firm in which he was a junior partner. Yeah, that's right, Inspector. Everson and Chase was the firm. $120,000 was the amount. A hundred... My goodness, Chase must be rather clever, Swindler. Yeah, I'm pretty speedy, too. He's kept two jumps ahead of me all the way. And you think he's traveling under the name of Tom James? I'm sure of it. In New Orleans, a man named Freddie Quintana told me Chase and James are one and the same and showed me some handwriting to prove it. But uh, Chase eluded you in uh, New Orleans. Yeah. Quintana was going to turn him over to me for a price, but then he turned up dead in an alley. So your friend Chase is dangerous as well as clever. Why? You do have your problems, don't you? A bucket full of them, Inspector. Mm. And now you think that this Chase or James is hiding here in Barbados? Well, I'm pretty sure of it. You see, he left New Orleans in a hurry after Quintana's murder. Understandably. But he burned some papers, not completely, and we found one with some numbers on it. They turned out to be about a ship sailing. I intercepted the ship at Haiti, but learned that Chase had gotten off in Havana. I see. The Havana police found out for me that he'd bought a plane ticket here to Barbados. And so here you are. Well, I must say, you're persistent. Oh, yeah. But so far, it's got me one big nothing. I thought my luck had changed when I met Connie last night, but apparently that was just a decoy. Connie? Yeah, here. Here, I've written down a description of her. I'd sure appreciate it if you could help me find her. Yeah. Oh, I say, from this description, it sounds as though it would be a pleasure to find her, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, Inspector. She's quite a dish. Well, how does this Connie enter into the situation? Well, pretty basically... You see, nobody up in New York could figure out why Chase had turned sour. His senior partner, George Everson, was mystified, and so was Chase's wife, Lola. But I guess the reason was pretty obvious right from the start, except nobody wanted to face up to it. Uh, I take it you refer to perhaps the uh, classic reason, uh, another woman. Right. 
I found out that Chase's New Orleans hideout had been arranged for him by a woman. Then last night, Connie told me she knew where Chase was, and for enough money to get back to the state, she'd tell me. Well, then this Connie would appear to be the other woman, huh? Yeah. She said she wanted out, but it turned out to be a trap. Oh? How so? Well, she set up a meeting for us last night, but on the way to it, I got slugged. Oh? Apparently, a night watchman came along right afterwards. Otherwise, I suppose Chase would have finished me off. One thing I don't get, though. What's that? Well, why would Connie call me from the hotel lobby this morning, then duck out before I could get downstairs? Was she alone when she left? According to the clerk, yes. Oh, I, I know what you're thinking, Inspector. Could be she still wanted to go through with the deal, but spotted Chase closing in, so she ducked out. Yeah, something like that. Well, Mr. Dollar, it would appear you're stymied unless you can find Connie again. Stymied? Inspector, I'm scuttled. Good afternoon, Mr. Duller. Clerk, has that girl been back? The one you called, Connie? Yeah. No, sir. I've been keeping an eye out for her here in the lobby, but I've seen no sign of her. No calls or messages for me, huh? No, sir. If I see her, of course, I'll get in touch with you immediately. Uh, you'll be in your room? No, no. I'll, uh, I'll be at the Trade Winds Bar. The Trade Winds? Well, that's one of the waterfront bars, isn't it, Mr. Duller? That's right. It was none of my business, sir, but I would be just a bit careful if I were you. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Well, that part of town, sir, it's not the best. Oh, you're telling me. I got hit over the head down in that part of town last night. And now you're going back there? Real glutton for punishment, huh? My thought was that the Trade Winds Bar was as good a place to go as any at the moment. Connie had wanted me to meet her there last night. If she really was on the up and up, she might try to contact me there again. The trade winds was a typical waterfront dive. Through the swirling smoke, I could make out sailors, fishermen, West Indians, and tourists all rubbing elbows. Item 22, 50 cents, two rum punches. They came cheap here. Halfway through the second one, I spotted someone in the doorway, Connie. But then she saw me and ducked out fast. So she didn't want to contact me. But I sure wanted to contact her. I went out the side door. My hunch was right. She was trying the alley. I stepped in front of her. Uh, let go of me. Oh, no, baby. Just stay put. Stay Please. Put. I don't know what this is all about. Honest, Mr. Now, Dollar. Now, look. This is no time to start playing coy. Where's Chase? I don't know. Come on. Come on. Please, you must believe me. I should never have come to you in the first place. I'm not Chase's girlfriend like you think. Oh, try again, sister. Really, I'm telling the truth, Mr. Dollar. I know I posed to you as his girl, but I'm really not. Look. I was trying to work something for myself. When you started talking about murder, I realized I was getting involved in things I shouldn't. What are you talking about? Honestly, I can explain everything to you, Mr. Dollar. Okay. Inside. That's just what you're going to do. Look, we'll take this table right here. Go on, sit down. All right now, Connie, let's have it. Mr. Dollar... I want you to know I'm pretty ashamed of myself for what I was trying to do. It was wrong. I should have realized it sooner. Less editorial and more news, huh? Well, I met Tom Chase, or Tom James as he calls himself, here in Barbados a couple of days ago. A couple of days ago? You mean in New York a long time ago, don't you, Connie? No, Mr. Dollar. I wasn't Chase's girlfriend. I'd never seen him before two days ago right here. <sighs> Go on. I had a date with him. Then I found out you'd been asking around town for him... So I decided on a plan. So? Well, I found you and told you I knew where Chase was. You thought I was his girl, and so I went along with it. I was supposed to have a date with him last night here at the Trade Winds, but he didn't come. He was too busy hitting me over the head at the time. You telling me the truth, Connie? I swear it. Then there's one big question. Why did you do it? Because I'm broke, Mr. Dollar. I'm stranded here in Barbados, and I want to go back to the States. I thought You were if... going to put the finger on him for enough dough to get back to the States, huh? I'm afraid that's about it. And you don't have any idea where he is now? None at all. Well, that's just fine. My last lead, out the window. I'm sorry, Mr. Dollar. You're sorry? Look, did he mention his girlfriend to you? He did say he was expecting a friend down here. They probably had it rigged for her to meet him here later. He didn't give you any indication where he was staying, huh? No. Or what his future plans were? No. There was one thing. Well, what was it? Well, I don't know if it means anything well, or not. Come on, let's have it. Well, we were here at the Trade Winds night before last. 
Afterwards, we walked around the waterfront for a while. Yeah? Tom stopped and talked to one of the fishermen there for quite a while. Ah. Oh. Could you hear what they were saying? No, they left me and went off to one side. Now, listen, Connie. Do you think you'd recognize that fisherman if you saw him again? Yes. I think so. Then come on. We went outside. It was sunset. A few fishermen were scattered along the wharves, mending nets, getting their gear in shape. We gave each one of them the once over and then kept going. Suddenly, Connie stopped. There he is, Johnny. The one who's yawning. Okay, thanks. You stay here. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> you don't sound very convinced. Oh, sure, it's a good evening. Soon it will be a good night, and then I can go to bed. Hey, uh, look, I'd, uh, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, sure. Sure. Uh, mind staying awake a few minutes? Good. It's that I'm tired. Last night I work all night. Oh? Fishing really must be good around here. It's not the fishing. It was the passenger. Passenger? Who? He don't give his name. Why'd you take him? Lagos Island. Where's that? Well, three hours by boat from here. What's there? Nothing. Nothing? A small abandoned pier, an old abandoned house, nothing else, nobody else. Uh huh. You let him off there, huh? Yes, but he should be comfortable. He took much food with him. You mean he's there now, then? Sure. There are no boats there, and nobody could swim so far. I see. Okay, partner. Thanks a lot. Pleasant dreams. At this point, it looked real easy. And I began to wonder if it wasn't a little too easy. Chase sitting there on Lagos Island with no way to get off. All I had to do was hire myself a boat and go pick him up. I looked at the fisherman. He smiled at me politely. I looked back at Connie. She smiled too. Yeah, everything could be on the up and up. Or it could be a great big trap. But one thing was clear. I was going to have to go to Lagos Island to find out. Now, here's our star to tell you about the next exciting episode of this story. Getting to the island of Lagos? Easy. But getting away from it in one piece? That's a different story. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us for the next exciting episode of this story on Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. Roy Rowan speaking.